Hello and welcome to the Winning Agenda's coverage of the San San Circuit Last Chance Qualifier. I'm Jesse Marshall and I have with me Sam Woodland. How are you, Sam? G'day, how you doing? Uh, so we're going to be commentating on this game between Arjorb and Hieronymus Mosh. We've got Arjorb on Gabe uh, and Gabe's had a reasonably good start here, got Sneak Door and the Temujin Contract, one of the more powerful cards to come out recently and already snagged an Exploited Palooza and a 15 minutes. Um, how do you think you'd feel as the NEH player here, Sam? Um, if I was looking at it right now, I would be, I wouldn't be totally, I wouldn't be totally uncomfortable with the way it's going at the moment. He's, he's got a R&D locked down, he's got a decent amount of credits and he's got the uh, Mumbad Temple up. So I would be pretty happy with the way things are going at the moment. Mm. So Gabe is has easy access to HQ for those Gabe credits through the sneak door, um, and also any agendas in HQ are a bit vulnerable, but that Temujin contract is locked on R&D, which has a massive little engine in front of it, so that's not so good for the Gabe player, is it? No, it's not. Um, unless you get something out that can deal with that, that Temujin contract uh, is going to have eight credits on it for a while. I doubt mm. he'll be getting back in. But um, the NEH player does need to fix archives, which he's just done. So I'd say he's bought himself a little bit of time now. Mm, hopefully an end the run ice there for the NEH player's sake. So a Fisk Investment Seminar. Not a card that I always enjoy necessarily. I love that being played against me when I'm on the court. Yeah, it's particularly awesome. as NEH, <laughs> um, when you're a little bit on the back foot, it lets you find just the right piece of ice or just the right agenda, just the right asset that you're after. Um, as the as the criminal player, I feel like that's the sort of card that you really want to play when you've got, you know, a turning wheel with eight counters on it and you're about to hit their hand and you just want to get those extra few cards or you're about to hit R&D, you've already seen the top three and you want to get them off the, off it. Um, it's sort of a, a maker's eye of sorts yeah. um, for yeah. criminals or, or another legwork. Um, you don't really want to see it being played as a dig. Yeah, yeah no, that... that does make a lot of sense. He's now using an inside job to get past that little engine. He's obviously, I would say, just looking for the credits and that single access. So I'm not sure if I, I probably would have saved my inside job for something else, but he probably was going to have to discard cards, so he probably had cards he had to use, and so chose to, to do that. Hmm. Um, so I've got a bit of a technical issue here. Dash. And does that have a dash? Some yeah, of them do and some yeah, of them don't. Yeah, it's closed dash prompt, I thought. Hmm. Maybe an underscore. One or the other. No, I think it is an underscore. I think it is supposed to be a dash. Try this. Yeah, it's not doing anything for me, so it probably means that they have to do it yeah that's the correct command okay, apologies viewers for these technical issues oh, oh. there's a disco not good no maybe he's just rage quitting and conceding <laughs> you'd uh you'd hope not yeah <laughs> Um, we're going to hope that this is a, a connection issue of sorts. Um, <coughs> and not a permanent disconnection. And we have Ryan back in the game now, which is good. Um, so, what have we had happen at the end of that turn? Just a res of the wraparound on HQ. So, it'll be interesting to see what Fractor um, Gabe is splashing here into their deck. Yep, if he gets that out, then he can probably be guaranteed of seeing a Siphon sometime soon. Mm. Although, I don't know how effective that'll be with four unresed assets. And now an advanced assembly lines. So the corp really going high on credits, <coughs> up to 12, and installing something from their hand that they really want. Uh, 
right, so this is one of those NEH horizontal decks that we've seen a lot of recently as ice has become a little less relevant, or certainly Towers of Ice haven't been seen around as much, and we've instead seen people using assets and the, uh, the trash cost of multiple assets to essentially function as the protection in itself. Once you reach that critical mass, it's pretty hard for most runners to go out and trash everything, particularly when you're able to turn off the economy of runners like Gabe Early with some good and the run ice. Use the special order. And the paperclip. Yep. So that's going to work very well against wraparound. And a Beal. Ooh. So Gabe going up to five points here. This is looking a bit dangerous for the NEH player. He's going to have to spend, use a click next turn to return 15 minutes to back to his deck. Provided he just doesn't lose. Mm. <laughs> so last click here. NEH is going to have a chance to recuperate somewhat by getting rid of that 15 minutes if they can get through this click. Oof. So is that the Astro in server five? I reckon there's a very good chance of it. He's gonna need to start scoring out. And if it is the Astro? Does he score out or does he take 15 minutes back? Mm. Has there just been another agenda draw here? So many questions. I'd score out. I wouldn't worry. Yeah. Ah, there goes the 15 minutes. So maybe it's not the Astro. It suddenly looks a lot less dangerous with only four points on the other side instead of five. Well, it's an agenda of some kind. What is it? A breaking news. Breaking news. Okay, so it was a sand sand, I think, that was installed. Um, and then we've seen a breaking news install score, presumably to just flush that out of hand. Uh, also to spend some credits, I suppose. Although spending some of the Mumba Temple credits are only four natural credits. Yeah, I thought that was coming. Yeah, so you, you could have felt that coming. It's, it remains to be seen what these other face-down cards are and whether the court player is going to be able to use some of those credits. No? Okay. So that's one reason why I like to leave the Sansan -san unrezzed so that you can choose to spend your real credits and deny the, the runner if you want, although um, the court player here is left with two credits anyway and that was the amount that they spent for the Mumba Temple, so it wouldn't necessarily on its own have made a difference. It just depends what those other face-down cards are. A vanilla not going to help against the paperclip? No, nope, you can kiss that sand sand goodbye. And mm. that's really not what you want from a sand sand. You don't want to be spending six just to score a breaking news, which you can score from hand anyway. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve there. I probably would have kept it and um, used it when you had the whole turn so you could close his accounts or... Uh, um, all seeing I'll do some, do some damage to him. Murder him would be best, but... Um, For those of you who haven't met Sam before, Sam's a big big fan of murder in Netrunner. Massive fan. Yeah. <laughs> I would never be playing an NEH deck without murder. Uh, so we're not, we're not sure what uh, this particular NEH deck has in it. We haven't seen a lot of influence so far, so there could well be some murder around the corner. There's still hope for him yet. <laughs> He's not floating those tags, though. Only three cards in hand for Gabe, so a Scorched Earth wouldn't go astray here. Okay, turning wheel. turning wheel comes out, so this is going to put a bit of a clock. Yeah, Gabe's in a very strong position now, with only... Oh, okay, good, that'll keep him out. I mean, the thing is, he can just go straight for HQ which is sort of better. I'm not really sure why we had the sneak door run there. Nah, Possibly just to force the res. Yeah, force the res. Although it just gave the court player a chance to use that Mumba Temple credit for value. So it didn't quite work out as the runner probably would have hoped. I'm not sure that subliminal messaging is going to be particularly strong against criminal. <laughs> Unlikely to be many turns where they don't make a run. He's not checking the remotes. If I was the um, 
court player now if I was because HQ is so easy to get into I would just be throwing them out wide they don't seem to be getting checked and I reckon at the moment it's probably the safest spot for them he's got his senses going so he's drawing up being able to basically ditch anything he doesn't want ditch any agendas or something that he probably can't score out at the moment He's just taking time to decide what he wants to do. <coughs> it's a great thing about Sensi. Such a, such a powerful card, but it only ever lasts one turn. I would expect that Gabe isn't going to let that stay on the board. Yeah, we were actually um, just having a chat the other day about the power of those political assets and just how much of a difference it makes to the game if they hang around for more than one use. You wouldn't expect Gabe to leave it around for more than one turn, but if it is there and the court player does get one more use out of it. It just is so massive. Such a huge advantage. Not only digging for the cards you want, but also hiding something that you don't want. Yeah, I'm still yet to see any influence, except for the um, Sand Sands and the breaking news. I'm battling to see where his influence could be. Mm. So... That Keymaster is really not what the NEH player wanted to see. No, he just shored up his HQ with another piece of ice in front of it, and now he's got the Keymaster out, which has just left it open again. So, yeah. And also, for six credits, uh, the runner can get into R&D and gain back five from the little engine. Oh, sorry, no, it's not going to cost them six. It's going to cost them eight. Um they get five back from the little engine though and four back from the Temujin contract so they're actually ahead every run on R&D for the first run for the first run mm. which if we keep seeing a few um, runs on HQ and a few more charges on the turning wheel could be a pretty big run on R&D ok another breaking news oh hello murder no not using the tags he used all three clicks to oh, score. Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was already on the board. I wasn't paying enough attention. Uh, so I'd like to note in the chat here that the cowardly crushed guava has just left the game. Yeah, he is a coward. Um, so another run on uh, archives through Sneak Door. Going to see more accesses on HQ, just really peppering that HQ making sure there's no agendas there but also charging the turning wheel yeah I, I would expect uh, he's used all his clicks I probably would have used a turning wheel then just to see I, I never like to have a turning wheel with more than two credits I usually use them as soon as I get them but some people like to do it differently some people love the glory run they love to see eight cards on R&D and like we said before with the Temujin contract there and the, the one cheap run on R&D that is available um Perhaps the runner's thinking here is that they'd like to charge it up as much as they can. So perhaps here, Sammy, with two new um, remotes just installed, we could be seeing some agendas coming down. But I sort of feel like if you were going to try and sneak out an agenda, you wouldn't do something flashy like play the advanced assembly lines because it really does draw some attention to what's going on out there. Yeah. Yeah, I would expect that there would be a Jackson in one of those because he has been ditching a lot into um, archives. So let's uh, see what we've got in archives. We've got one. three assembly lines, sand sand, a couple of assets, and a face down, which could be an agenda. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, with how porous HQ is, I certainly wouldn't be keeping agendas in hand, with especially that turning wheel going. I'd be either ditching them or playing them sideways. So we've got the another Temujin contract coming out on HQ. So Temujin contract is a, a unique card. So we can only have one on the board at a time. And we've replaced the R&D one with an HQ one. Team sponsorship getting rezzed. Probably indicates we're going to see a score. So could that have been an agenda install in Server 12? We'll find out. Or is that just a, a preemptive res of the team sponsorship? No. He's going to score. We know he has a shipment in hand as well. 
Okay, geez, this is looking like a score. <clears throat> well, his first click is install, so he's going to have to install. Oh, okay. Yep, we've got the subliminal messaging combo. Probably should have seen that coming when we saw the subliminal messaging. So subliminal messaging and shipment from Sansan counts as three clicks for the purposes of uh, Jeeves. And because all three clicks were spent on operations, uh, the player, the court player does get another click. So they can go shi um, shipment from Sansan um, into subliminal messaging and then advance, which means they got three advancements on the card they just installed, in this case the Beal, and up to four points. So it's four points all. The NEH player has fought back really hard here. Um, and we've got an install of the advanced assembly line from archives, which is going to be a few credits and another free install from hand. Yeah, that was a great recovery there by the NEH player. I was happy to see that. So with Jeeves making an appearance, probably unlikely we're going to see murder, Sammy. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I know. It's very disappointing. Um, Gabe won't let Jeeves, on, let Jeeves stick around. I'd also, say. we forgot about the influence from these advanced assembly lines, didn't we? So that's six plus the team sponsorships. Yeah, not a murder deck. Seven, eight. Yeah, looks like we're, uh, we're an HB Alliance deck. Ah, and there's the play of <coughs> the current... Uh, rumor mill, so that'll shut down Jeeves um, and saves him some credits of going and trashing it. Rumor mill, an incredibly powerful card. One of the many powerful cards in Blood Money. We're seeing rumor mill, paperclip, and Temujin contract all being put to good effect in this Gabe deck. Oh, Res of a Cobra, and he has no Sentry Bloker. That's a risky run. This is a nice one. This is a very, very good res. So this is exactly what you dream about your Cobra doing when yeah. you put it in your deck. <laughs> the only problem is with paper, there's no point in trashing Paperclip um, because you can play that from uh, Archives. Is it the one you play from Archives? Paperclip? So um, probably should have trashed the program first. Um, Yeah, so I'd be getting rid of the card gate breaker for sure. Um, and then that will shore up his archives and R&D. He would probably be running Passport, you would imagine. But um, he'd only be running one more. So that's going to be a very heavy blow to him. Well, I'll tell you what you don't want to be trashing there, Sammy. That's a paperclip. Yes, no, you do not. You can <laughs> play that from archives. All right, so unlikely that the NEH player is going to lose Ooh. the game right here. Yeah, but having that Astro hit, that's certainly painful mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm sure that our NEH player would have been dreaming of installing and scoring that next turn off of Jeeves. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was not to be. Well, this game has been quite a good game. It's been a lot of swings mm. going on. So no access to R&D or archives and sneak door now. And he's unlikely to keep running through HQ until he gets his Sentry Breaker out. So the NEH player, again, has bought himself some time. Is it going to be enough to score another three points? We all know that as the NBN player, the last agenda can be the hardest one to score a lot of the time, particularly against criminal decks once they get set up. Uh, but the NEH player now is still two agendas away from winning unless we see some sort of miraculous global food score, which seems unlikely. Uh, he accidentally rezzed, and I think he's de-rezzed it because he didn't want to. Okay, no, that's okay. Look, we've all, we've all misclicked a piece of ice on Jinteki.net before. Um... So are uh, we going to see this Mumba Temple trashed? I would say probably. Yeah, that's gone. Which is not really the worst outcome for 
the corp. I mean, it's already got a lot of value off it. And also the runner's not sitting on a huge number of credits and with limited access to HQ, it's likely to remain that way. So if Paperclip is gonna be used um, just to run on HQ, it's not the worst thing. I mean, it's essentially just take two net damage and pay one credit to get into HQ because the, um, the Paperclip gets to be reinstalled, um, although he doesn't have to pay the four to install the Paperclip again. So it costs five at the moment to get into HQ and two net damage, which is probably too steep. Um, so we, as you said, Sammy, we're probably going to wait until we see the Sentry Breaker before we see access to HQ. Although the cost of five is obviously defrayed by the fact that there's a Temujin contract still sitting on HQ. So we could still see runs on HQ that have a Temujin contract and Gabriel's ability get the access and still be up one credit. Yep. Um, but taking two net damage. Yeah, that's a good point. I... I personally wouldn't be doing that, but um, I guess it all depends on what the two cards in the hand are. Mm. Um, and we've we got a score, yeah, another breaking news. So this is putting the NEH player onto five points, which is a much better place to be. So that's one of those two agendas that we were talking about, leaving only one left to score for both players. Um, and the NEH player in a reasonable position because of the fact that the little engine on R&D is holding down the fort at the moment with no code gate breaker on the table. Yeah, I would think a quandary in a remote server now and then some, another piece of ice in front of it to avoid the legwork would almost make this... Um, to avoid the inside job? To avoid the inside job, sorry. Yeah, yeah it would almost make the server impregnable for the... Uh, Gabe player because I doubt he'd be having another code gate breaker particularly other than passport other than passport yeah. um, the other thing is in the in the heap so we do have that inside job as we noted earlier which would actually be a really nice one to have to run R&D right now you can see three cards off the top of R&D yeah. by inside jobbing it yeah and having scored that breaking news that's turned off uh, the current so now Jeeves is back live so looking very good for NEH again so uh, Gabe could be looking for a inside job, um, could be looking for to make that run on HQ that we we're talking about and see three cards with the turning wheel, although I feel like spending those turning wheel counters on R&D at this point is going to be much more powerful considering we've got a Sensi, we're late in the game, the NEH player has been flushing out a lot of agendas from hand. You'd think it's more likely that they're sitting in R&D, but you never know. Yeah, and he's just clicking for credits there. He's probably desperately digging for a um, uh, sweeps week or something. Not that that would get you a very good return with only three cards in hand. Mm. But yeah, he he needs credits at this stage. So that a pretty big turn there for NEH, gaining three credits, getting the click back from Jeeves, um, and then spending that to install and draw another card. <laughs> That's a lot of value. Yeah. But was it enough? Were they relevant cards? We'll, we'll see. We've got a preemptive resin use of Jackson there. What do you think of that, Sammy? I think in the meta that is today, it's the only way you can use Jackson. Mm. You have to do it like that, because otherwise you can see that um, rumor mill come back out, or you can see um, uh, the political operative installed. And yeah, that can really ruin your day. I think that's good advice. Certainly no fun when you think you've got a Jackson to save you and then all of a sudden Rumor Mill or Polop shuts that down. So a draw, a fairy. This could be a siphon. Unlikely though with three credits mm. and so many cards in remotes. Probably just going to be a run. I would think so. I wouldn't like to see the turning wheel being used here. I would prefer to see him just access the one card and then gain the credits. But we'll never know. We'll see what happens. I wouldn't think the NEH player would have kept an agenda in hand with Sensi out. No, he has used it. Okay, well, this may be the game and I may to look the fool, but we'll see. Mm. I would have thought they would have kept one in hand to try and score it out next turn, assuming that the sense will be trashed, but maybe not. 
I think we will save this entity trash now. So a Jeeves, a Sensi, and a Shipment in hand. Which means that uh, we could we see could a see, score. We could see, yeah, this could end next turn if he draws an agenda. Mm. Off the Jeeves. Uh, particularly if we've got a subliminal message. Oh, he's got one. He had an agenda sitting there the whole game. Oh. That's what happens when you don't check remotes. Amazing. So great game there. Well played by the NEH player. Um, and well played by the runner as well. Uh, getting up to six points, putting lots of pressure on. Had that one access where it was on five points. Could have hit an agenda in HQ before the 15 minutes were shuffled back in. Just managed to get there. So well played to both players. And we'll be back very soon with the second game from this match. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.